Hey guys, what's up? It's Lainey and today I'm giving you guys everything I read over the summer of 2016. It is no surprise that I was super busy over the summer and I didn't really have time to do my individual wrap-ups for the month. So around June I was thinking that I'd be doing a whole encompassing of what I read through from May to the end of August. The good thing about this, I feel like, is when I was observing like what everything that I was reading, is that I did a really good job of splitting it between like ebooks. I read a lot of ebooks this summer, but I also read a lot of physical books. I can barely remember May, but the first book that I read in May was a reread, and that was um, The Black Wolf by J.A. Remersky. This is the fifth book in the In the Company of Killer series. You guys know how much I love this series. Tab, all the things, because this book really changed my perspective on one of the main characters, and I absolutely love him now. So I, I, of course, I had to tab everything. And the reason why I was rereading this was to prepare myself for the sixth book that was also released back in May. And that was Behind the Hands That Kill, which is, of course, the sixth book. I did rate this a five. I think I rated this a 4.5 out of five. Um, this one is also like, I feel like it's a jumping off point for the new story arc that our characters are going to be following. This book is significantly shorter than the other ones. This was released the week, the weekend before BEA. Yeah, because I was home. And was it Mother's Day or Father's Day? No, it had to be Mother's Day. And we were at the park and I got this notification saying that the book was dropped because um, it was a surprise when the book would be released. When I got that tweet, I was like, I have to drop everything. I'm at the park. I need to get out of the park. I need to go back home and I need to start reading. Since it was kind of like a surprise release, I had it on ebook form and now I have bought the physical copy because they are now available. I betty read this book with Riley and Kenya, my really good friends. We love this series and the good thing about reading it with friends right when it's released is that you're reading to finish before everybody else does. So you're constantly reading this and we read this in like less than 12 hours. We were so obsessed with it and we were texting each other our theories and everything. Besides the fact that I absolutely love the series and all the characters, I also love this book because I love the reading experience of while I'm reading it. I love reading it with my friends and I love discussing everything with my friends. That was this one. The next book I read was a book that everybody I feel like has read and I finally have read it and that was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I feel like in my heart it was a 3.5 out of 5 rating, but I think I rounded it up on Goodreads because of the originality. I really like how original this book is, but I'm a narrative girl. I like feeling a character's feelings when I'm reading it, and I feel like I didn't get that very much in here because um, obviously this book is told like in text message form. It's also told in like surveillance video. Um, it's pretty much told in a whole bunch of different like media platforms and I really did like the original originality of that to tell the story but it, to me it suffered just because I felt like I wasn't completely connected with the characters at all. The next book I finished was Rachel Vincent's Bloodbound. This is the first book in the Blood Oath or the Blood something trilogy. Rachel Vincent wrote um, the, the Shifter series which is my favorite urban fantasy series next to the Fever series. So I wanted to read her other series and this is a trilogy so I read the first one. The first one I think I rated a 3 out of 5. I did enjoy it and I have the other two so I do want to continue reading it. It took me kind of a long time to finish this like I was reading it from March up until the end of May. I was just kind of reading it on and off. But I do like it because it had some really unique aspects to it that I haven't seen before in other books. Um, in these kind of books. I really liked the power system in this book because um, I just I just really liked it. I could also see it as a TV show on HBO, like a lot of books I could see being a show on HBO. It was a solid start to a series, it just didn't wow me as much as like the Shifter series did. The next book I finished was an arc and that was Diplomatic Immunity by Brody Ashton. Brody Ashton wrote the Everneath trilogy which I have also read and I enjoyed. Um, that is a Persephone and Hades retelling and then Diplomatic Immunity is um, pretty much what it sounds like. A girl in DC so it's she's like a journalist and she wants to be well, she wants to be a journalist, and um, she kind of falls into the crowd of the Abbasi Row kids, who, and they're all of the teenagers who are in the children of the ambassadors of different countries here in America, and it takes place in like a boarding school. So I really liked that aspect of it. However, I rated it a two out of five. I had really high hopes for it, and I've been trying to read a lot more political thriller t books just because I'm writing a YA political thriller. So I like to like read how other people 
do certain things. So that's kind of why I wanted to read it. I was also excited to read it and I really liked the cover of it so I just wished I liked it more than I did. The next book I read was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. I <laughs> loved this book. I rated it a 4.5 out of 5. Thousand and One Nights retelling so it, um, Scheherazade, she is the main character of this book. I didn't get completely invested into it until about I feel like 70 pages in and then it really started picking up so that's why I knocked off half a star. The next books I read were all Kindle books. The first one was Command Me by Geneva Lee. I absolutely hate that title. It just makes me want to barf every time I say it. Like I just had, I just felt something come up when I said it just earlier. This one is, I feel like, came out around the Fifty Shades of Grey era. So it is a romance. There's a lot of mature content and it is a romance. So keep that in mind while you're watching this. So the reason why I wanted to read this, that it interested me, was because the main guy character is the Prince of England. So it's kind of like an alternative royal family over in England so that's kind of why because I think around this time I watched The Prince and Me and I absolutely love that movie. And I wanted to read like the NA version of The Prince and Me so that's why I read this book. I rated it a 2 out of 5 again. I mean it was pretty cookie cutter. I knew exactly what was going to happen when it was going to happen. I do want to continue the series. I'm just not in a rush to read the series. <sighs> Yeah, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either, so. And after that, I read Addicted After All by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is the third book in the Addicted series, but it's like the fifth book in the overall series, the sixth book in the overall series. Uh, I don't know. The main reason why I took a break from reading the Addicted series is because I really like the other two couples a lot more than I like Lily and Lo. So then when I had to get back into Addicted After All, I like didn't exactly want to read it but I knew I had to because I want to get to the next one because the next one was my favorite couple. I did really like this. I think I rated it a 4 out of 5. I think I was able to get through it so quickly just because I was talking to Jill and Kayla about it and also um, Kenya was reading one of the earlier books so we were, it was just like a big group chat when we were talking about it and then that just like pushed me to go further in the book series. I actually finished that and I started Feel the Fire right away, which is the next book in the series which follows Connor and Rose, and they're my favorite couple. They're just, oh, I love them. And I really, really liked this book because it showed a side of Connor that we haven't seen yet, and it just made him completely different from any other new adult male love interest that I've ever read before. So I really, really enjoyed that. And then after that, I read All Fall Down by Ellie Carter. This is the first book in the Embassy Row series. Again, I read this book because it's a, kind of a political YA book, which is why I wanted to read it. I rated this one a three out of five. I thought it was like the characters were just like almost there and they just weren't at the level I wanted them to be at. However, this does feature an unreliable narrator, which was bonus points for me because I was not expecting that and I really really liked that. I will be continuing the rest of the series. Next two books I read were the first two books in J.A. Ramirsky's Paranormal Trilogy. It's called the Darkwoods Trilogy and the first one is Mayfair Moon, second one is Kindred, and I read both of those back to back. I actually read them on vacation. They were just really addictive reads and I also really like J.A. Ramirsky as a writer so I want to read all her other books as well. I rated the first one a 3 out of 5 and I rated the second one a 4 out of 5. I really really liked the way the direction of the story went in the second book. Um, the first one was like pretty typical paranormal romance Twilight era, but I still really enjoyed it, probably because I really like the author. I read my favorite book of the year. It's going to be really, really hard for my most anticipated books at the end of the year to beat this book. And yes, I'm talking about Crooked Kingdom and Crystal Storm. It's going to be really hard for them to beat this next book, which is definitely one of my favorite books of all time now. And that is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This book I rated a 5 out of 5. It was the easiest 5 star rating I have made all year completely blew me away. I just really, really connected with these characters so much. If you don't know, The Sun is Also a Star follows two characters, Natasha, who is from Jamaica, and she moved to America with her family. However, they've been living there illegally, and they ended up getting deported, and they have to leave that night of when the story you open the story and it starts and she's being deported. And she's trying to fix that, but she doesn't know if she's going to be able to or not. And she meets this Korean boy named Daniel and they kind of, 
I don't want to say it's insta love, but it is, but it's told in like such a way that it doesn't feel like insta love. It's the best written insta love I have ever read in my entire life. And it just makes sense. And I feel like Nicole Yoon always has like something extra in her books, like um, everything, everything had like the illustrations. And then um, in this book, you have like different pieces of information that get stuck and in the next chapter she'll explain that. I have like nothing bad to say about it. It's such a beautifully, beautifully written story. Five stars, ten stars. And then after that book I read Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This one I did rate a solid four out of five stars. I liked these two characters a lot more than I liked um, Katie and Ezra in the first book. There's like a Russian criminal, that's Nick, he's the main guy character in this book, so automatically it's like I have to love him because that's just like my favorite type of character. And then there's Hannah who's like a complete cross between Serena Vanderwoodsen and like a Katniss. She's just like a badass party girl and I just I really loved her character. I feel like the the series, like the story that's being told is bigger than the characters. So the way the story went, like it just there's this one part at, towards the end that just like blew my mind. Like I couldn't comprehend what was actually happening. It was just insane and I really really loved that. That is why I love the book so much was that plot twist. And then I also read A Promise of Fire by Amanda Bouchette. I really loved this book. This is the first book in the Kingmaker trilogy. This book just came out in August and then the second book is coming out in January. And this kind of is a fantasy romance with Greek gods and I really really loved it. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this I do have a non-spoiler book review on this book so I'll link that down below. The next book I read was Sparrow by LJ Shen. This is one of those crime romances. I'm still trying to find a crime romance novel series that is on the same level of In the Company of Killers and I haven't found it yet. I rated Sparrow a 2 out of 5. While I liked it, it was kind of basic. Like I wasn't like overly invested in it. Though I read it quickly, I, w I still wasn't like, this is so awesome. And this is a standalone, so I should also say that. It didn't impress me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So that's why I rated 2 out of 5. It was still written very well, and I did like the way that the crime of Boston was portrayed, and I don't say that often for crime romances, so. And the last book I read of the summer was The Darkest Magic by Morgan Rhodes. This is the second book in the A Book of Spirit and Thieves trilogy. This is kind of like the prequel spinoff to Falling Kingdoms. I rated this book a 4 out of 5. I also have a book talk on this book. This one's spoilery, so I'll link that down below as well. I just can't believe next year is going to be the last year of the Falling Kingdoms books. I'm just... It just makes me sad. This time next year, we'll be preparing for the final book in the Falling Kingdom series, and I'm just not ready for that. Like, I... I'm just not ready for that. So that's all the books I read over the summer. I don't think I can choose a favorite one, so I'm just gonna not, and I won't choose a least favorite either. So I hope you guys all have a really great day. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!